Hi judges, welcome to another segment of Honor Liwag Memorial High School Senior High School Math TV. Last time we were able to define the hyperbola and to name its parts. For today, we'll be having the discussion regarding the two theorems involving the equation of the hyperbola, wherein the center is given as the origin. So how do we now get the coordinates of the foci, the vertices, and the co-vertices if we are given different theorems? But before that, let us first identify what axis will be the transverse axis using these theorems. So theorem number one states that x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Remember, if we are given this equation, Therefore, we will be calling this as transverse axis x. Transverse axis x, wherein the transverse axis is the horizontal. How? How did we know that the transverse axis is horizontal? By just merely looking at the denominator or the sign of the first one. Since x squared over a squared is positive, Therefore, it is the transverse axis. Whichever of the two variable is positive, therefore, that becomes our transverse axis. And since x squared over a squared is the positive one, it becomes the transverse axis. If that is the transverse axis, therefore, y squared over b squared is our conjugate axis. x squared over a squared is our major axis, therefore, major horizontal but in hyperbola, we'll be calling that as transverse axis x or transverse axis horizontal. And the conjugate axis now for this theorem is the y axis. So, what are the coordinates of the center, the foci vertices, and the covertices? Actually, the coordinate of the center is just located at the origin, and that is point zero zero. And since we have x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared, Therefore, this is our hyperbola, okay? If that is a hyperbola, this will be our vertices, this will be our foci, this will be our co-vertices, and this will be the auxiliary rectangle, wherein the center is located at the origin, okay? So, this will now be the points of the coordinates of the foci, the vertices, and the co-vertices. If we have transverse axis horizontal, remember that we are changing the value of x for the transverse axis x. Since we are changing the value of x, therefore, we could find the foci and the vertices on the x axis and we are changing its values. When we say foci, we are dealing with c. Therefore, the foci would be plus minus c0. Vertices, we are dealing with a. Therefore, it is located at plus minus a0. Co-vertices, we are dealing with B, therefore that is 0 plus minus B since the conjugate axis is the y-axis. Okay, so how about the equation of the asymptotes? So this is the asymptote and these are the diagonals of the auxiliary rectangle. And the dimension of the auxiliary rectangle is very simple, that is just 2a by 2b. In order for us to determine the equation of the asymptotes, remember this formula. Actually, all you have to do is to get the equation x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared, and then it is not anymore equal to 1. It becomes equal to 0 in order for us to get the intersecting line, which is the asymptote. Okay? So simplifying, this becomes x squared over a squared is equal to y squared over b squared. Get, this, um, get the square root of both sides. Get the square root of both sides. Therefore, this becomes x over plus minus a is equal to y over plus minus b. Since we are getting an equation of a line or the asymptotes, therefore, we should only be getting y. Okay, therefore, we should cross multiply plus b to the other side. And this becomes plus minus b over a x is equal to y. Or y is equal to plus minus b over a x. 
And this is now the equation of the asymptotes. Or we have two equations. That is y is equal to the first one, which is positive. That is positive b over ax. And the second one, which is the negative one, negative b over ax. Okay? Since we are dealing with the transverse axis horizontal, do not forget that if we are getting the asymptotes of transverse axis horizontal, therefore, we should be remembering b over a. Again, that should be b over a since this is transverse axis horizontal. So let us now find out what happens if we are given another theorem. And for another theorem, again, the center is located at the origin. But the theorem is given as y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared is equal to 1. We could find out that the positive one is the term having y or y squared over a. Therefore, if this is the positive one, we could finally say that this is tie or transverse axis vertical or y. Transverse axis is the vertical. Okay? Again, in order for you to know the transverse axis, you just look at the positive variable. And in this case, the positive variable is y. Okay? So, let us now try to draw the hyperbola. So, if we are, if we are given transverse axis vertical, therefore, we could find or we could locate that the vertices and the foci will be on the y or on the y axis. Okay? So, W1, W2, the auxiliary rectangle, okay, and our hyperbola is up and down, okay. So our hyperbola now is up and down. Unlike for parabola that will be determining if it is going up, down, to the right, or to the left, in hyperbola, we will only determine if it is up, down, or left or right left right okay so we only have two choices for hyperbola but in parabola we have four choices okay so since this is transverse axis vertical our equation would be the foci or the coordinates of the foci transverse axis y therefore we are changing the y coordinate of the center foci the variable is c therefore that is zero plus minus c the vertices, the variable is A, therefore that is 0 plus minus A. Covertices, the variable is B, therefore that is plus minus B0 since the transverse axis is the X axis. Okay? So, we're now ready to draw the asymptotes. This will be the asymptotes. And the asymptotes are the diagonals of the auxiliary rectangle. And always remember that the intersection of the asymptotes is the center. Okay? So, since this will be our asymptotes, therefore, we should now write the equation y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared and then equate that to zero. And in equating that to zero, we'll now be having an equation y squared over a squared is equal to, since we transfer this out, to the right side, it becomes positive. x squared over b squared. Since we only need y or the variable y on the left side since we are dealing with an equation, so this becomes y squared is equal to cross multiply a squared that becomes a squared over b squared times x squared. Get the square root of both sides and in getting the square root, therefore this becomes y is equal to plus minus a over b x and this is now the equation of the asymptotes if we are dealing with transverse axis vertical therefore we have two equation of asymptotes this becomes y is equal to the positive side therefore that is plus a over bx and the negative side which is negative a over bx okay so if you would like to remember it easily so this is the catch so for Theorem 1, transverse axis horizontal, remember that the denominator is A 
And for theorem 2, the denominator is B. Okay? So, again, for horizontal, A. For vertical, that would be B. So, how do we solve for the value of C now? Again, in order for us to solve for the value of C, we should get C squared first, and that is equal to the square of the sum. So, that is A squared plus B squared. Okay? So if you have comments, if you have questions, if you have suggestions, do not forget to message me on Facebook, on Twitter, on in and on Instagram. If you're not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do subscribe and do like my videos. So once again, I am Engineer John Edward Hernandez saying that mathematics is always fun. Goodbye and God bless.